For more than seven decades, David Rubinger chronicled the history of modern Israel. From the 1947 UN vote for partition, paving the way for the Jewish state, to many of its leaders like David Ben-Gurion and Golda Meir, Rubinger was there, camera in hand. In the retrospect, consider that I was very lucky because yeah. I... I happened to have a professional life which coincided with the creation of a state. 60 years, that gave me a chance that very few photographers have to really cover a story, an entire story from A to Z. His most famous photograph came in 1967 during the battle for Jerusalem. Tell us about the picture that has become an icon in Israeli history. Well, I, that, uh, I, that night I was, uh, the night before I was in Sinai. I was with the brigade that broke through at Rafiach. And I heard on the radio, I had mentioned about Jerusalem, the helicopter came down to pick up some wounded. Nobody asked me, you know, there was no, no tickets very issued for that flight. I just squeezed in. In the midst of the Six Day War, Rubinger flew from the Sinai to Beersheba. He then drove to Jerusalem, stopped for a quick visit with family, and headed straight to the Western Wall. Rubinger arrived here just minutes after the paratroopers captured the city. The wall was crowded, and in 1967, the distance between the wall and nearby homes was just about 10 feet. So to get a better perspective, Rubinger got down on the ground and began to shoot. And I was lying on the ground and shooting, and these three soldiers just walked by. I got three frames nearly, nearly identical. Rubinger's photo not only captured the heroism of the paratroopers, but also the end of a 2,000-year-old dream of the Jewish people to return to Jerusalem. Given its fame, Rubinger didn't even think it was the best picture he took that day. He preferred this photo of Rabbi Gorin riding the shoulders of the paratroopers. Even so, he chose the negative of the three paratroopers to give the government over the Gorin photo. Then, in 1967 terms, it went viral. The government press office started printing and handing out for two, two lira, two pounds, which was the equivalent of about 20 cents today, I think. And anybody could buy it, and everybody bought it. AP put it on the cover of their book. I, I was mad, I was hopping mad. Years later, Rubinger changed his mind. And I'm now grateful for all the thieves, because it made, sort of made my career. Yeah. That yeah. one picture. That day at the wall also changed his life, leading to a wave of emotion. The crying was a result of the three weeks that preceded this moment. You must not forget, Israel was in a mood of facing doom, doomsday, everything. Everybody thought, maybe we'll win, but we'll cost a thousand. Instead, Rubinger said the Six-Day War was like life from the dead. If you're about to die, or you think that your chances of survival are very, very low, and you suddenly you're not only alive, but Israel is five times its size. You've beaten all the Arab armies. You're king of the world. The whole world admires you. You burst out crying. Rubinger died just a few months before the 50th anniversary of his famous photo. While he often disagreed with Israel's policy after the 67 war, Rubinger felt very special about the country he followed with his camera. I think it's unprecedented in history that people did in six years what this country did in six years. From 600,000 people or so in 1948 to 7 million with progress on all fronts, in all, all fields. So with all my criticism, with all my misgivings about what's happening now, in historic, in the historic view, I think there are very, if any, precedents in, in history at all mm. that can compare to it. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, The Western Wall, Jerusalem.